The Reno Phil and the Nevada Museum of Art have been looking for the perfect project on which to collaborate for years. And with this photographic collection, the Altered Landscape Collection, we found the perfect match. I am so thrilled that we're all here. We've had so many initial discussions about this topic and to be at this moment where I get to bring in Jimmy Lopez Bolito, this composer that I have been uh, searching for and watching over years and years. And now I have just decided that he is perfect for this topic and this project. So welcome, Jimmy. I think this is wonderful because what excites me about the project too is how very Reno specific it is. And it joins two families, right? the Reno Philharmonic and the Nevada Museum. Absolutely. And so trying to make sure that that there is really this kind of synergy and that that is reflected in the composition itself. It's a really important collection. The museum started to acquire photography in the early uh, 1990s, but we, we, we looked to the moment of the 1970s. That was a pivotal period in photography where photographers were moving away from sort of the romantic nature imagery of Ansel Adams, mm -hmm. and they wanted to look at what was changing in our world, and there was a lot of human impact. And so mm -hmm. that is the sort of foundational idea behind the photographs in this collection, and you see that manifested in, in many, many different ways. I think what I want to do is just look at the images and see what they, what they awaken in me, and in a way, you know, later on, be able to articulate that in, in, in music. You know, one, one thing that I take away from the project is um, I, I will never take anything for granted again. I, I feel that, first of all, it has exposed me to uh, the art of photography, mm -hmm. which uh, I had very little exposure to prior. So it has increased my awareness and appreciation for it. But it also has brought, uh, opened my eyes into a reality that we all knew was there, climate change. but. Uh, in that coupled with the fact that, you know, living in California and experiencing the, the seasonal fires and getting it so close to home, I just felt the urgency of this collection. So I feel that these stories need to be told. With all that we do leading up to the premiere of the symphony, we hope to inspire conversations about our relationship with this land that we love, with the rivers on which we depend so deeply, and with all of the natural resources on which we build our lives. And I also hope that orchestras around the globe will pick up the symphony and perform it and we're actually setting up a way for orchestras to really give back. Rather than paying the Reno Phil a commissioning fee to perform the work, we're asking them to make a donation to the Nature Conservancy so that this piece will have, you know, it will bring awareness, but then also will give hope and will we'll be about taking that action. You know, we would have done it anyway. <laughs> so oh excited gosh. to see you. It's incredible. It's totally incredible. Here we are. Finally. It's kind of incredible, isn't it? It is. I just can't believe that we're finally going to hear, yeah. hear the first sounds of this, give birth to this thing. This is a project that, you know, was written at the height of the pandemic. I, I, was, I wrote it in 2020. And Laura and I had discussions about how to make it relevant, you know, throughout uh, everything that was happening. And so it felt almost inevitable uh, that the pandemic was lurking into the piece as well. Um, and stillness is a little bit of that reflective moment where everything just comes to a halt. And we are forced to deal with this new reality that is so different from all the frenzy of our lives prior to that moment. Now the first movement is called the Great Acceleration and it makes allusion to a period of time that started in 1945, so right after World War II, 
and continues to go until this day, some think. In short, it is a period of frenzied growth and uh, exponential growth in terms of population, travel, carbon emissions. Uh, it is a period of time that is unique and that we will that will leave lasting consequences uh, for us and for the planet. Now, stillness, the second movement, uh, is a direct allusion to the pandemic and when everything came to a halt. You can feel and hear the tortured harmonies, the, the melodies trying to make their way through, but it was a difficult piece to write because we were in the middle of the pandemic when actually I was writing it. But reckoning kind of gave an opening because I equate it to the stages of grief, a moment when we're able to deal with our own thoughts and our own pain, but also a moment of meditation, a realization of how to move forward from here. Alignment, the very last movement, which has a more positive outlook, hoping for a future where humans have finally learned how to coexist peacefully and in harmony with Earth. You know, when you think about it, art is uh, a mirror. Artists create the opportunity for us to reflect on uh, our life experience, you yes. know? By, by you um, uh, writing a piece of music, you're, you are synthesizing that. And I get a piece of your, your human spirit. And then by Engaging with that myself, I understand my, my own experience a little bit better. Beethoven wrote timeless music. We all learn every time we hear and perform Beethoven. But there is no replacement for an artist writing here and now.